I'll copy. Copy, we're primed for retreat if we get within six meters. And on the HCP, I see lights as expected. For corridor monitoring, um, using camera three, uh, I see the light uh, within the corridor. The vehicle size matches the outline. The light appears to be about a quarter of a vehicle port of the circle. The circle is just slightly port of the center. Copy, Karen. And for HHL, we're showing differential of range zero and range rate 0 0.04. Copy, Karen, those HHL marks sound perfect, and we are done with HHL for today inside 30 meters, and the other things that you read down sounded good as well. Copy that. The uh, HHL that they're referring to is the handheld laser. Once Cygnus gets within 30 meters, that uh, laser no longer needed, so Karen is uh, going to put that away. Cygnus now at 25 meters away from the station, closing in at a fairly slow rate, as you would expect during these final few meters as it gets closer to the station. But it is heading up to the 10 meter hold point here momentarily. And as we mentioned, there'll be another go, no-go pull at that point to uh, proceed with capture. The crew is monitoring along. They're watching some of the readouts on the robotic workstation. There's two of these stations. One's in the Destiny Laboratory, the other one's in the Cupola. And they are currently working on that one. Uh, and getting the arm ready to uh, do its job for today. Here's a look at where the cupola is. It's out there on the uh, tranquility module facing down toward the planet below. You see how close Cygnus will be to where they're going to be. Cygnus is going to be heading up to what's called node 2. That's the harmony node and the common berthing mechanism. This is just basically the hatch that will form a bond between the two spacecraft. But as Cygnus is going to be installed on the bottom side, of Harmony later on this morning. On the robotic workstation that the crew is looking at, there's a couple different marks on it. One is a big green box that you see there. That is how they know the Cygnus has been lined up properly. You will hear Karen Iberg calling down as well as Luca, uh, sort of giving some readouts on what they're seeing. Of course, this camera is set up to take a look at exactly what they're seeing, but the crew will be communicating uh, here in the next uh, several minutes as Cygnus closes in to make sure that it's all lined up and as expected. And then if you look down at the bottom, it sort of looks like sort of a piece of a, a home plate in a baseball game. That is what they call the captured volume. That's basically just imagine a uh, virtual uh, bucket that Cygnus needs to sort of fit within for the arm to reach out and capture it. You can see that the arm is already positioned and uh, ready for its debut here in a few minutes. But uh, we're about uh, less than 30 minutes away from the capture of this vehicle coming up here very shortly. Cygnus now at 21 meters and uh, closing in. Station Houston for Cygnus. Go ahead. Karen, we're estimating a capture time of 11 o'clock uh, straight up. We won't re be requiring any hold for lighting. Looks good to us. We won't have KU at that time, but there is no constraint for KU. How copy? Copy that. Uh, we're shooting for 11 for capture. That sounds good to us. Copy, and the picture looks great down here.
So Katie Coleman, the Capcom there, updating the crew that we're looking at a capture time uh, about 14 minutes from now, right at the top of the hour, if all goes according to uh, plan. Cygnus right now is 17 meters away from the station. You heard her mention uh, that if they do indeed capture this vehicle, uh, as they just advised right at the top of the hour, we will have no KU at that point, which means we'll have no video, which of course is unfortunate, but we will pick up our video a couple of minutes after that. So we'll just stand by as this uh, Cygnus continues to close in. This is a view from the end of the station's, was a view from the end of the station's robotic arm. As Cygnus sort of uh, lines up and gets into position, but the vehicle now uh, 15 meters away from the orbiting complex. Orbital Science is confirming that Cygnus' systems are uh, set up for capture. The uh, JAXA team also confirming that their systems are set up to go as well. And Courtney McMillan will do a go-no-go -no -go poll here momentarily for uh, the uh, final capture. Again, we're out of video communication with the space station. We will not pick that back up uh, until about 11.02 GMT, which is about 6.02 AM Central Time. Copy, handover. Go ahead. Karen, we copied your call. Everything sounded good to us. Down here, Orbital and Houston, and JAXA are all go for capture. You are go for the Cygnus capture sequence, step four in 1.110, the approach and monitoring and capture procedure. Okay, copy that. And as you were talking, we did get an exceeding limits ATT message appear on monitor one and three. Copy. And Karen, we're expecting if we wait just a little, we'll see those come back in uh, within limits. We're about three minutes from a short handover. Okay, the limit check went away, violation went away, so uh, we're continuing in step four. Copy, step four. Since uh, we don't have video communication with the space station and can't show you the live images, we're going to give you the next best thing. This is the uh, animation that the robotics team here in Houston is looking at. This is how they monitor the actual position of the arm. This is a live view of their computer screen. Uh, so we'll keep taking a look at this as uh, Cygnus has arrived at the capture point and the go has been given uh, for the crew to proceed. So we should see this arm reach out. And uh, here in a few short minutes, we'll have a uh, brand new spacecraft captured by the uh, space station crew. Again, Luca Parmitano will be at the controls. Karen Nyberg will be assisting. Uh, she'll be the one talking with the ground teams here in Houston. But activity is beginning to uh, ramp up pretty rapidly here in both Houston and in Dulles. Uh, as Cygnus is almost ready to uh, be snagged by uh, the uh, team on board the space station. Robotics officer here in Mission Control confirming that the crew is beginning to move the arm towards Cygnus. So take a look at that uh, animation there on their screen. two meters away.
Again, Luca Parmitano beginning to steer the arm toward Cygnus. Standing by for capture. The snares are now closing around Cygnus. They are beginning to uh, lock up on the vehicle. Signus capture complete. Go for seniors post capture reconfiguration. And capture confirmed. Okay. Smiles and clapping there at the. Uh, A good capture down here. That's uh, a long time coming. Looks great. Okay, and Katie, after we got the um, the capture, all the confirmations, we do see a Lee faced. Um, but we do have uh, capture and close. We did have the retract with the tension before we noticed that. And we were load safe. Station Houston, we saw the same. We saw a good capture. We're just looking for latches. We are looking at it. So again, a happy team there at uh, the Mission Control Center just outside of Dulles, Virginia, as the Orbital Sciences team. And there is our first view of Cygnus now captured on the end of the station's arm. So quite a success for this team. Cygnus still holding out there at the 12-meter uh, point away from the International Space Station, but a successful capture at 6.01 a.m. Central Time, 7.01 a.m. Eastern Time. These two vehicles were high above the Indian Ocean about to make a uh, swing up toward the northeast over parts of Australia. But again, capture confirmed at 6.01 a.m. Central Time. Cygnus now attached to the space station's arm. Station Houston for Cygnus. Go ahead, Katie. Sorry to keep you hanging there. We see uh, um, a, a good config down here, except for latches. So we have a we have a good hold on Cygnus. Um, we'd, we'd like you to apply safing, and then we can look into our latch status. Okay, copy that. And Karen and Luca and Mike, we'd like to congratulate you on a great capture today. I'd also like to say uh, welcome aboard to the Orbital Sciences G. David Lowe. It's named for G. David, one of our astronauts. He flew th three times on the shuttle, and he's, he's just a great human being who bravely explored and had a tremendous vision for the future of spaceflight. We're really proud to have the G. David Lowe aboard uh, the ISS today, and thanks for all your good work today. Special Luca, I would like first of all to say that I'm, I was honored to have been allowed to uh, to be part of this today. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it was really really a pleasure, and uh, it was a privilege to work until today with all the teams on the ground, uh, all the teams both from uh, from Houston, of course, from Orbital, and here on the station.